Hello, and welcome to today's home designer demonstration. My name is Philip, and I'll be presenting for you today. And in this demonstration, we're going to be covering the fundamental roof tools available within home designer software. We do have a couple of different home designer programs. We will be working in home design architectural today, but most of what we do will be applicable to home designer suite and some of it to home designer interiors. And if you're using home designer professional, everything we cover today will be applicable to your program. Before we get started, let's run through our agenda of what we'll be covering today. We're going to start off by running through our roof tools and how you can build a roof using both the build roof dialog box and through controlling your walls. We'll then design a couple of basic roof styles starting with a gable and moving on to a gambrel, a shed, a goal wing, a half hip, and a salt box roof. We will then design an A-frame roof and a one and a half story roof. Next, we'll run through both the auto and manual dormer tools and then apply all the concepts we've been learning towards a sample plan. So let's get started. Here we are in our home designer program. Up towards the top of the screen, we have different tools for controlling our design. There's different tools for walls, doors, windows, cabinets, and so forth. But for this webinar, we're mainly going to be using our roof tools. And these tools up here are considered our parent tools. If we click on a tool, we get a set of child tools that pop up on the sign that allow us to further customize our design. You can also access these same tools by going up to build and then selecting the parent tool and then the appropriate child tool. For this webinar, we're mainly going to be using our wall and our roof tools. To get started, let's draw a simple 30 by 40 foot house. So I'm going to use our straight exterior wall tool and I'm just going to click and drag where I want that wall to go and continue designing until I have all four walls connected. Next, let's dimension this house. If I want this dimension right here to be 30 feet, either this wall at the top or this wall at the bottom is going to have to move out in order to account for this change in space. So I'm going to select the wall I want to move, select the dimension I want to change, type in our new dimension, 30 feet, and press enter. And then we push that wall down, and now that dimension is 30 feet. Let's go ahead and change the size of our top and bottom parallel walls. So to do this, either the left or the right wall is going to have to move to, to account for the change in space. So we're going to select our right wall, select the dimension we want to change, type in our new dimension, which is going to be 40 feet, and press enter. And now we have our 30 foot by 40 foot structure. And if we get into a 3D view by selecting our 3D camera, and we're going to be using the perspective full overview for most of this webinar, we can see the design we've made, and we can actually view both our 3D design and our floor plan side by side by grabbing this tab up here and just pulling it off to the side. You can also access the same command by going up to Window and selecting Tile Vertically or by pressing Shift F6 on your keyboard. Next, you'll notice that my mouse still has our camera tool selected. So to deselect this, I'm going to press Spacebar on my keyboard. And you can also access the same command right here in your toolbar. Next, let's make our floor plan a little bit bigger by clicking in the canvas and scrolling in a bit with our mouse and panning over until we have it centered in our screen. A couple things worth pointing out, once we connected all four walls there, the program automatically produced a roof, a foundation, and it produced our dimension lines, which we already edited. And this is because we have auto rebuild roof foundations and automatic exterior dimensions turned on within the program default settings. And if this is something you do not want turned on, you can turn those off. And we'll be turning on and off the auto rebuild roof throughout today's presentation as needed. So now that we've created a simple 30 by 40 roof, now would be a good time to go through our build roof dialog box. So we can access this by going up to our roof tool in our toolbar and selecting build roof. And we can also access this by going up to build, roof, build roof, or by pressing control R on our keyboard. And I'll be doing this pretty frequently throughout today's presentation. But for now, we're just gonna click on build roof. Next, I wanted to run through what the different build roof dialog box options mean. So under the roof panel, we have this option for build. And the first checkbox we have is auto rebuild roofs. Whenever you have auto rebuild roofs turned on, any changes made to wall placement, floor or ceiling height, or roof directives and walls, the roof will automatically update to meet these specified changes. If you do not want the roof to update, simply uncheck this box. When ignore top floor is unchecked like it is now, the roof will build so that it bears on the walls of the top floor of the plan. When you have ignore top floor checked, the roof will build so that it bears on the walls of the floor below the top floor in the plan. And we'll go through some examples where we have these checked throughout this webinar. 
Next, let's go over our pitch, which is going to be how steep our roof is. The pitch is going to be a simple rise over run. So for however many inches we rise, in, which you can specify in this box, we're going to run a foot, which is going to be your left to right horizontal. To better understand this, let's take a look at a simple pitch chart. So if we go over to our image on Google, we can see that we have this pitch chart here that shows your run, which is going to be from left to right, and this example is 12 inches. And we see we rise every inch, and the pitch of this angle right here gets steeper and steeper and steeper. The same concept applies. The greater the value that you plug into your pitch, the steeper the roof is going to be. Closing out of our pitch chart, next let's go over our even gable overhang. Our eave overhang is how far our roof is overhanging our normal walls, and our gable overhang is going to be how far our roof is overhanging our gable walls. A great option to find out more information about what any of these options means is to press help in the bottom right hand corner. This will pull up the help menu in the program which will provide you with more information about any of these options. You'll notice there that I skipped the minimum alcove size, so let's look that up in the help menu. We're just going to scroll down to the minimum alcove size. And we can read that the minimum alcove size is the minimum depression size needed into a wall for our roof planes to continue building by following the walls. In this example, the minimum alcove size is 36 inches, and that is reflected in the walls, and so the roof planes continue building by following the walls. In the example on the right, the minimum alcove size is not met, and so the roof planes continue building over the main wall. Now that we know what the minimum alcove size is, let's close out of the help menu and continue going through the build roof dialog box panels. Under the materials panel we can change the materials used for different options of the roof. Under the roof styles we can click on one of these roof styles and gaining more information and instructions on how to build the roof style scene here. And for today's demonstration we will be building all of these roof styles. Let's cancel out of this and take a look at how we can control how our roofs build through our walls. Pressing spacebar, I'm going to double click on this wall twice to open it up. And right here, under the roof panel, we can control the different roof options and different roof styles we want to build. Under our roof options, if we have a full gable wall selected, we will create a gable roof style with the ridge centered above the selected wall. In this picture right here, this wall is selected as a gable and the ridge is centered over at the top. If we have two parallel walls specified as gables, we can select a perpendicular wall and select high shed and it will build a shed style roof. In this image here, we have this wall and this wall over here specified as gabled and the perpendicular wall specified as the high shed. And we will be creating this roof style in today's demonstration. If we have a wall specified as a knee wall, it will behave similarly to an attic wall in that it will provide support for our roof and continue building upwards until it encounters a roof plane. And the last roof option here is extend slope downward. And when this is selected on a bumped out section of the house, the program will continue drawing roof planes over the walls until they meet any overhang requirements. To take a look at an example of this, let's press help in the bottom right hand corner and scroll down a little bit on our help menu until we reach the extend slope downward section and just click on the link and in our example at the top without any of our walls specified as full gable walls or to extend the slope downwards the program is going to build the traditional hip walls around the structure in the picture below we have the two parallel walls on the bump out specified as full gable walls and the perpendicular wall specified to extend the slope downwards and so the slope continues off the hip until it reaches the hip overhang requirement on this small wall down here. Closing our help screen let's next take a look at our different pitch options where we can control the pitch of a single roof plane separately from the rest of the plan. If you need a roof plane to have multiple pitches you can check upper pitch what the upper pitch is, the starting height in the plan and how far it is from the baseline and this picture we have a roof with multiple pitches selected and we will be building this roof style in today's demonstration. Let's go ahead and minimize this and the next option we have is overhang length where we can control how far the roof planes are overhanging a single wall independently of the other walls. And our last option is going to be our auto roof return and with this option selected it will build a small roof plane along the wall between the roof planes. You can specify the length of the roof return between the two walls, how far it's going to extend, the roof type you want to use, and the slope of that roof return. Let's go ahead and cancel out of this for now. 
And the next feature I want to run through is our gable roof line. So to use this tool, I'm going to go up to build roof gable roof line, and I'm just going to click it and drag out where we would like to build a gable roof along our wall. And as soon as we release from drawing that gable roof line, a gable roof is automatically built. If we zoom in close, we can click where we drew the line and you can verify that we have the line selected in our bottom left hand corner. And if you want to see it a little bit easier, just simply select it and drag it out to about there or wherever you need it. And let's open it up and take a look at some of the different options. Where we can once again set the pitch of our gable roof, the overhang of this gable roof along the wall. We can select how long this line is and the angle if we need to be very specific. If we want to change our line style, we can do so here. And if we wanted to include an arrow along this line, we could. So that's going to cover building a roof into a wall using the gable line tool. Let's go ahead and cancel out of this and actually go ahead and delete that gable line. We don't really need it for this. And we have a couple more different roof tools, but we're going to be covering them throughout today's presentation. So with that, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit press space bar and go through designing some of our different roof styles. So our first roof style, the hip roof, we've pretty much already covered. By default in our home designer products, once you connect four walls, the program will automatically place a hip roof over these walls. Real quick, let's take a look at this in elevation. So I'm going to go up to our camera tools and select our elevation camera and just click and drag where we want that elevation to point. So now we're in our 2D elevation view, which is going to be a flat 2D view of the side of the house that we pointed our elevation camera at. We aren't really going to work in an elevation view much in this demonstration. However, I wanted to just show you it was there because there may be situations in which you're working on your design and the elevation view allows you to easily and quickly recognize the changes you're making to your design. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And let's go ahead and create a gable roof. Building a gable roof style is easy in home designer software. Simply select the wall ends that you want the gable roof to build over, and under roof options check full gable wall. Let's go ahead and minimize this photo, go over to our floor plan, select one of our walls, open up the wall, and under our roof panel check full gable wall, and press OK. And take a look how in our 3D view, we just can pan our camera over a little bit, how this end automatically built that gable roof style. We can go back to our floor plan view, select the wall, and we can open it up and check that full gable wall, but we also have a shortcut in our bottom toolbar to automatically create this end as a gable wall. So let's go ahead and select it. And on the other side in our 3D view, we can see how the program automatically built that gable roof style. Building a shed roof is just as easy as building a gable roof in home designer software. We're going to start off with two parallel walls being marked as full gable walls and then a perpendicular wall being marked as a high shed wall. We're then going to adjust the pitch of this roof through our build roof dialog box. So let's go ahead and minimize out of our photo and in our plan we already have our two wall ends specified as a full gable wall. So next we're just going to specify this perpendicular wall to be a high shed wall. I've already selected it and now we're going to open it up. We're going to go to the roof panel and we're going to select high shed wall and press OK. And in our 3D view we can see that it built that high shed wall on this side. But next let's adjust the pitch to something a little bit more reasonable. So to do this I'm going to go up to our build roof dialog. And I also could have gotten there by pressing Control R. And I'm going to adjust the pitch to be something more reasonable. Maybe I have a 3 inch rise and press OK. And now our roof has automatically rebuilt and we have a much more reasonable pitch on this shed roof. Next, let's create an offset gable roof. To do this, we're going to have two parallel walls marked as a full gable wall. And then we're going to have one of our perpendicular walls have a roof plane over it with a different pitch. This will make our two roof planes have different slopes and where they meet up at the ridge will be offset on the gable wall. So let's go ahead and minimize our picture and jumping over to our floor plan. We're starting with our default hip roof style and we're just going to specify both of these ends to be gable roofs. So let's go ahead and select one wall and change it to a gable in our bottom toolbar and select the wall opposite it to be a gable wall as well. And we can easily and quickly verify how that's coming in in our 3D view. And then we can just select one of our perpendicular walls, open it up and go down to our roof panel 
and under the pitch options, change the pitch. Something like a four inch rise would be appropriate and press OK. And we can get into our 3D view and just pan around to see where our roof ridge is offsetting on this gable wall. The lower we set our pitch for this wall on the bottom, the further offset the, the ridge will be along the gable wall on this side, which is also the right hand side wall in the floor plan. And on this wall on the opposite side, the higher you set this roof plane's pitch to be, the further this roof plane is going to have to stretch to meet this new pitch requirement, which will also offset this ridge on the gable wall. Next, I want to build a salt box style roof. To do this, we're first going to build a second floor above our first floor and have the walls on the, both the first floor and the second floor on two parallel ends be marked as full gable walls. We're then going to take one of our second floor walls and move it in a little bit and mark it as a knee wall so that our roof planes continue building from the ridge down to the wall on the first floor. Let's go ahead and close our photo. So here we are with our 30 foot by 40 foot structure with a hip roof above it. And the first thing we're going to do is build a second floor. So we're going to go up to build, floor, build new floor. And you can also press shift X on your keyboard to access the same command. And this question that's going to pop up is going to ask us, how do we want to build the second floor? We can derive the second floor from our first floor plan, or we can have a blank screen to draw out our second floor. We're going to derive our second floor from the first floor plan, so we're going to press OK. And our floor 2 defaults dialog box is going to ask us if we want to adjust some of the height information or ele elevation information for the second floor. And for this example, all this height information is how we need it. So we're going to just go ahead and press OK. And in our 3D view, we can see that the second floor was instantly built. And over in our floor plan, we can tell what floor we're on up here in our toolbar. We are currently on the second floor, but if we wanted to jump back down and work on our first floor, we can just go down a floor. But for this example, let's go back up to the second floor. And the first thing we need to do is have two parallel ends with gable walls on both the first floor and the second floor so that we build a gable roof above it. So in our floor plan, I'm going to select the wall on the right hand side. And in our bottom toolbar, select change to gable wall. And I'm going to do the same thing with the wall on the left hand side. And so I've done this for the second floor, but now let's do this for the first floor. I'm going to go up to our toolbar and just go down a floor. Select the wall on the right hand side and change it to a full gable and select the wall on the left hand side and change it to a gable. And if we go ahead and take a look at that photo of the salt box roof one more time, we can see that we now need to move one of the walls on the second floor in a little ways. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's just bring our photo off to the side. And before we actually do that in our 3D view, let's jump into a different rendering technique called our glass house, which will allow us to see through walls and other objects in our design. And this glass house view is a good view to work in when you need to see through walls or other objects that you can't typically see through. So in our floor plan, let's go back up to the second floor and grab one of our uh, walls and just click and drag it in. And let's take a look at what happens in our 3D view. Our home designer program has built a roof on both our second and our first floor. And if we go down to our first floor, we can see that green dashed line where that roof plane is coming in. To solve this, we need to open up this wall and specify it to be a knee wall, which will tell our roof planes to build over this wall and take our roof plane on the first floor and start it on this first floor exterior interior wall and build it up until it's meeting the ridge on the second floor. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go over to our floor plan and go back up to the second floor. We're going to select the wall and we're going to open up the wall in our bottom toolbar. And then we're going to go to the roof panel. And under the roof options, we're going to just check knee wall and press OK. And our program instantly updated our plan and our roof plans until the roof plans on the first floor met up with our roof plans on the second floor at the ridge. You'll notice that in the 3D view, we have an angled wall right here. And where that angled wall starts is reflected by this dashed black line in our floor plan. This angled wall may be OK for some situations, but you can see in our photo of the salt box roof style that we do not have an angled wall. And the ceiling and the vertical walls are meeting up at a 90 degree angle. If we wanted to meet a requirement for a situation like this, what we can do is simply select this wall and drag it inward until it meets up with our dashed line. And there we no longer have that sloped wall on this section. 
The next roof style I want to make is going to be a gambrel roof. To do this, we're going to start off with a full gable roof over our structure by having two parallel wall ends be set to full gable walls. And then on our two perpendicular walls, we're going to set the roof pitch options to have an upper pitch that is shallower than the lower pitch. So the lower pitch is going to be steep and then the upper pitch is going to be shallow. Let's go ahead and minimize our photo. And now we're in the program and we're going to be starting with our 40 by 30 uh, structure and it's automatically going to have a hip roof over it with auto re rebuild roofs turned on and we're going to change this to be a gable roof by selecting our two ends and selecting the walls to be full gables so let's go ahead and do this we're going to start off by selecting our wall on the left hand side and in our bottom toolbar selecting full gable wall and same with the wall on the right hand side select it and change it to be a full gable wall and next on our upper and lower parallel walls, we're going to open up the walls and under the pitch options, we're going to tell the program that the roof planes over these walls will have an upper pitch and we're going to specify that pitch to be lower than the normal pitch. So I'm going to select our bottom wall and then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to go to our roof panel and under our pitch options, I'm going to leave our normal pitch how it is. I will select upper pitch in this checkbox and then we're going to change this upper pitch to something a little bit less shallow and easier to see. So we're going to go ahead and change this to 4. And then we're going to change the in from baseline starting distance. So let's review what this in from baseline means real quick. Our baseline, or roof baseline as you may sometimes hear it call, is going to be the exterior edge of the main layer of our wall type. So let's take a look at what this means. So we're going to go up to our general panel and under our wall type we're going to press define. And defining your own wall type is going to be a feature that becomes available in Home Designer, Architectural, or Professional. In this particular wall type, our siding 6, we know that the main layer is going to be this first stud framing layer. And so our roof baseline is going to build on the exterior edge of the main layer. So we're going to locate our exterior layer and know that the roof baseline is going to build about right there. So in our preview, it's going to build on this edge over here canceling out of this, we can tell the program how far in from that baseline we want the upper pitch to start building. For this example, let's go ahead and set that value to be 7 feet and press OK. And we can see how that updated in our 3D preview. And let's go ahead and take a look at this in an elevation camera. That might be easy to see. So going up to our camera tools, we're going to select our elevation and just click and drag which wall we want it to be pointed at. And we can see that we have our roof plane starting and it has a steep pitch on the lower part and then it changes to a more shallow pitch on the upper part and let's go ahead and do this for the wall on the opposite side real quick I'm going to grab our elevation camera and drag it down right here and reposition our screen and then pressing spacebar I'm going to select our wall on the top and open it up go to the roof panel and we're going to check it to have an upper pitch we're going to change the upper pitch to be 4 and we're going to change our in from baseline to be 7 feet and press OK. And with auto rebuild roofs turned on, our roof will automatically adjust. And now we have that gambrel roof style created. The next roof style I want to make is going to be a gullwing roof. And to do this, let's bring up an image as to what the final design is going to look like. The gullwing roof style is going to be very similar to the gambrel roof style, and that has two walls set as full gable walls building a gable roof and it's going to have the roof have an upper pitch but where it differs from the gambrel roof style is that the upper pitch is going to be more steep than the lower pitch whereas on the gambrel roof style the lower roof plane has the steeper pitch so let's go ahead and minimize our photo and create this design and we're just going to go down and select the lower wall and open it up go to our roof panel and go to our pitch options and we need to adjust both our pitch and our upper pitch and our in from baseline distance we're going to need to adjust slightly so let's go ahead and take care of this we're going to change the pitch to be 4 and then pressing tab on our keyboard we're going to go down to the upper pitch and notice there that when we adjusted the pitch the in from baseline distance automatically updated when you are adjusting your roof specifications oftentimes the math putting your roof planes together is going to automatically update which you can manually adjust as needed. So we're going to update 
um, the in from baseline here after we adjust the upper pitch. So let's go ahead and take care of this. We're going to go ahead and adjust this value to be an 8 inch rise over a 12 inch run. And then we're going to go back to our in from baseline and change that back to 7 feet. And press tab on our keyboard to update that. And then press OK in our bottom corner. And with auto rebuild roofs turned on, that's going to update our plan. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the upper wall. We're going to go ahead and select it, open it up, go to the roof panel. We're going to change the pitch to be 4, the upper pitch to be 8, and still pressing tab on the keyboard, change the in from baseline to be 7 feet. And then we're just going to press OK. And there, once again, with auto rebuild roofs turned on, the plan's going to update. And now we have that goal wing roof style complete. The next roof style we're going to build is going to be a half hip roof. To do this, we're going to start with two parallel wall ends marked as full gable walls. And we're going to open up these walls and then tell them to have an upper pitch, which will create an upper roof plane we can specify the starting height of. So let's go ahead and minimize our photo. And we're starting with our 30 by 40 hip roof design. And let's specify the two ends to be full gable walls to create our gable roof style. So I'm going to select the wall on the left and in the bottom toolbar mark it as a gable wall, which in our 3D view we can see updated to a gable roof style. And then repeat the same action on the right hand side, selecting the wall and changing it to be a gable wall. And then we're going to open up these roof planes and specify them to have an upper pitch to create that upper roof plane. So with that right wall still selected, I'm going to open it up, go to our roof options, and check upper pitch. And I'm going to change the upper pitch to be 4. And then we're going to change the starting height to be 185 inches, and press OK. And in our 3D view, we can see how that half hip roof style was created. And let's go ahead and repeat this for the left hand side, first selecting that left hand wall and opening it up, going to the roof panel and checking upper pitch and changing it to be a 4 inch rise over a 12 inch run and changing the starting height to be 185 inches and pressing OK. And that updated the roof plane on the left hand side and in our 3D view we can see that we now have that half hip roof style complete. The next roof style we're going to build is going to be a mansard roof. To do this, we're going to start in a plan that has a standard hip roof over it, and we will tell the program we want the roof planes over each wall to have a lower pitch that is very steep and an upper pitch that is very shallow. And we will specify a specific start at distance for the upper pitch. So let's go ahead and minimize our photo, and we're back in our home designer program, starting with our plan that is 30 feet by 40 feet, and it automatically has a hip roof over it. And now we're going to adjust each one of these walls to have an upper and a lower pitch. So let's go ahead and select our first wall, open it up, go over to our roof options, and we're going to change our first pitch to be very steep. So in this example, we're going to have a 24 inch rise over a 12 inch run. And then we're going to check upper pitch. And we want our upper pitch to be very shallow, very gentle. So we're going to change this to be a one inch rise over a 12 inch run and then we're going to specify our start at height for the upper pitch to be 132 inches which will give us our in from baseline distance and press OK. And then we're going to continue doing this for each one of these walls. So let's go ahead and work in a clockwise direction and select the wall on the left, open it up, and we're going to go to the roof panel and change the pitch to be 24 and check upper pitch and change the upper pitch to be 1 and change the start at height to be 132 inches and then go ahead and press OK and then we'll change the wall on the top open it up go to the roof panel and change the pitch to be 24 select we will be having an upper pitch change this to be 1 and change the start at height to be 132 inches and press OK and then we're going to do the same thing for our last wall on the right hand side. Open it up and go to the roof panel. Change it to be 24. Select we will be having an upper pitch. Change it to 1. And change the start at height to be 132 inches. And press OK. And that will complete our mansard roof style.
The next roof style we're going to create is going to be an A-frame roof. And this roof style is going to require a few more steps than the previous roof styles we've been working with. So let's go ahead and minimize our photo of our A-frame roof. And back in our home designer program, we're starting with our 30 foot by 40 foot plan. And the first thing we need to do is put a full gable roof over our plan. So we're going to change the two parallel walls to be full gable walls. I'm going to start by selecting the wall on the left and change it to be a full gable. And then same thing with the wall at the right. And with auto rebuild roof turned on under the build roof dialog, this roof style is created in our plan. And the next step in creating an A-frame roof is building a second floor. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go up to build, floor, build new floor. And we also could have pressed shift X on our keyboard to access that. And this question is going to ask us how we want to build our second floor. Do we want to just derive it from our first floor plan? Or do we want to have a blank plan that we can draw out the walls on our second floor? For this demonstration, we're going to be deriving the second floor from the first floor plan. So we're going to press OK. And next we can adjust our floor to default height information. And we will be adjusting this for our A-frame roof. But let's go ahead and press OK to see how this automatically builds. It's going to create a second floor on top of the first floor. And with auto rebuild roofs turned on, our roof is going to adjust and build on top of the second floor. Next, we want our A-frame roof to be very steep going down just about to the terrain if we had one. So let's go ahead and adjust the pitch of our gable roof. And to do this, we're going to go up to build roof, build roof. And we also could have accessed um, our build roof dialog by pressing control R. And we're going to change our pitch to be a 22 inch rise over a 12 inch run. And right here is where we have that auto rebuild roofs turned on. And let's go ahead and press OK. And just zoom out slightly in our 3D view so that we can see what's going on a little bit better. There we go. And let's actually go ahead and turn on our glass house view so that we can see where our floors and ceilings are located through these walls. So I've gone up to our rendering techniques and we're going to select our glass house. And we can see now that we have our foundation, our first floor, our second floor, and then a very large attic. Now, in order for the roof plane to build lower to the ground and cut through our second floor structure in order to give us that A-frame design, we're going to need it to build on top of our first floor walls. To do this, in our build roof dialog box, we have an option for ignore top or second floor, which will build our roof planes one floor below our top floor in our design. So in this plan, we only have two floors, so it will build on the top of the first floor. So let's go ahead and check this ignore top floor option. I'm going to press control R on my keyboard to bring up our build roof dialog box options. And I'm going to check ignore top floor which will ignore our second floor and press OK. And with auto rebuild roofs turned on, our roof planes will build on top of our first floor, cutting into our second floor. Next, to bring our roof planes even closer to our first floor, we're going to lower the ceiling height of the first floor. So let's go over to our floor plan. And real quick, before we do that, notice that we have these black dashed lines running along both sides. And this is showing where the slope of the roof plane meets our ceiling. So we're going to go back over to our floor plan, go down to the first floor, and we're going to change the ceiling height. I'm just going to double click in the room to open it up, go to the structure panel, and we're going to change the rough height of the ceiling, which is marked with indicator E in this little box, to get to be six inches. Press tab and you can see how that updates, and we're going to press OK. So that changed our ceiling height to be very, very small, which you can see dropped that roof plane significantly. Uh, nearly to ground level. So now that we have the roof planes positioned where we want them, we're going to uncheck auto rebuild roof to leave our roof planes how they are. And then we're going to readjust our ceiling height. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go to build roof, build roof. And I could have once again pressed control R. We're going to uncheck auto rebuild roof and press OK. And then we're just going to readjust our ceiling height from the first floor. So we're going to click in the floor and we can double click to open it up or press open in the bottom left hand corner. Go to our structure panel and then to quickly get our ceiling heights back to what they were, we're just going to check this box for default and it's going to restore them to the program defaults and then we're going to press OK. So that's going to restore the default ceiling heights but now the walls are coming in a bit odd in that they're automatically building outside the structure on the second floor. This is because on the second floor we have walls that are placed outside 
of where the roof plane slopes into the second floor. So we're going to adjust the position of walls so that they are located where the floor meets the slope of the roof plane on the second floor. In our floor plan, we're going to go up to the second floor. And with this black dashed line, we can see where the slope of the roof plane meets the ceiling, but we cannot see where the slope of the roof plane meets the floor. So to see where the slope of the roof plane meets the floor, we're going to go turn on our reference floor display. And to do this, we're going to get into tools, reference floors, reference floor display. And we get that red line right here indicating where the slope of the roof plane is meeting the floor. And then we're just going to select our wall and drag it in until it's about on top of that slope. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And once we have our plan positioned how we like it, we're going to go ahead and turn off our reference floor display. There we go. And you can also press F9 on your keyboard to access this shortcut. Now, on the second floor, if you wanted the ceiling to build all the way to the ridge, you can simply open up the room, go to the structure panel, and uncheck ceiling over this room, and press OK. And it's going to remove that ceiling, and the second floor is going to build through the attic. There's really going to be no attic space, and your ceiling is going to go all the way to the ridge. In some plans, you may want this space to be a loft area, so to do that, you're going to grab your railing tool and drag out where you want your loft space to be. And then any unused space you're going to set to be open below. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go up to our railing tools. And we're just going to select our straight railing. And just click and drag it. And we have that coming in in our floor plan up on the second floor. And let's actually adjust it so that the ends of the railing meet the exterior wall. And zoom in a little bit closer and press space bar. And actually it looks like they already are meeting it. So next we're just going to open up the unused space. And set it to be an open below and press OK. And in our 3D view, you can see that when we specified this area to be an open below, it created a ceiling over this room. So we can go ahead and once again remove the ceiling so that it builds all the way to the interior ridge. So let's go ahead and open up this open below room, go to our structure panel, and just uncheck ceiling over this room, and press OK. And that removed that ceiling area. And real quick, let's actually get into another 3D camera from the first floor to see how this looks. So we're going to go back down to the first floor and we're going to go to our camera tools and just make sure we have our full camera selected and click and drag where we'd like to see this from. And there we can see we have our A-frame structure with a loft area. The next roof style we're going to build is going to be a one and a half story roof. And this roof style is easy to create in home designer software. But if you need additional resources on creating this roof style, we have a great how-to article that goes step-by-step -step how to create this roof, and we'll show where this resource is at the end of today's webinar. So here we are in Home Designer, and we're starting with a 40 foot by 30 foot house, and the first step in building a one and a half story roof is building the second floor in your plan. So to do this, we're going to go up to Build, Floor, Build New Floor, and we're going to be asked how we want to build this floor. And we're going to select Derive Second Floor Plan from First Floor Plan and press OK. And all of our floor 2 defaults are going to be OK for now. Uh, we'll come back to these here in a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and press OK. And with our auto rebuild roofs turned on, we get that hip roof we have built on top of our second floor. And next what we want to do is change our hip roof to a gable roof. So to do that, we're going to select the two walls at the end and mark them as full gable walls. So let's start with this wall on the left, mark it as a full gable, and this wall on the right, mark it as a full gable. And pressing spacebar, let's go over to our 3D view and adjust the rendering technique so we can see what's going on with our ceilings and floors. So we're gonna adjust it from our standard render to our glass house render. And now we can see through the walls and see what's going on with our ceilings and with our floors. And there's different ways and different styles you can build your one and a half story roof. If your design does not require you to have livable attic space, you can remove the ceiling from your second floor and tell the program that you want the roof to build directly on top of the first floor. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this. We're going to go back to our floor plan and on our second floor we're going to uncheck ceiling over this room. So we're going to double click on the room to open it up go to our structure, and we're going to uncheck ceiling, which will remove this ceiling here in our 3D view. And then next we want our roof planes to build on top of our first floor, ignoring the second floor. So to do that, we're going to 
um, open up our build roof dialog box and I'm going to do that by going to build roof build roof you could have also pressed control R to get there and we're gonna check ignore top floor and press OK so now our program is ignoring the top floor when building the roof but it's building the roof as a hip style roof because in our floor plan we have our walls on the first floor marked as hip walls so we need to change any walls that we want to be gable ends to be gable walls so let's do this for the wall on the right and the wall on the left and now we have our one and a half story structure with a roof over it for your design you may want your second floor to have a few feet of walls before your roof starts sloping inwards like we have in our photo here um, so let's go ahead and demonstrate how you would model this we're just going to move our photo off to the side and we're going to start off by undoing some of the work we just did to create this roof style so we're going to go up to our uh, build roof dialog box uh, build roof right there and we're going to uncheck ignore top floor press ok and now the roof is building on top of our second story and we are also going to create our attic space once again so we're going to go back to the second floor in our floor plan just double clicking right there go to structure and we're going to check ceiling over this room which is going to add a ceiling and create an attic space so we're going to press ok in order for our roof to build over just a small portion of our walls on our second floor we're going to adjust the ceiling height on the second floor so we're once again going to go into our floor plan and open up the room on the second floor and for this example we're going to adjust the rough ceiling height E right here and you can use this chart to see where these different hiding informations are coming from we're going to adjust E to be 24 inches and we can press tab on our keyboard to see a preview of that and once we're happy with how high that is we can press OK so now we have our walls that are 24 inches high and if this is all that your design requires you can go ahead and uncheck auto rebuild roof so that your roof doesn't adjust anymore when you adjust um, your walls or your ceiling heights so let's go up to build roof build roof and we're just going to uncheck auto rebuild roofs and press OK so now when we make any changes to our walls or our flooring height information our roof plans will not update so what we can do next is just adjust our ceiling height once again so that it's at a normal level so in our floor plan again we're going to select our room on the second floor open it up go to the structure panel right here and then we can go back to our rough ceiling height and just recheck this box for default or manually enter in a new uh, ceiling height for this room if we wanted to and press OK and in our 3D preview you can see how it pushed the ceiling up and if you didn't want this small attic space right here simply open up the room once again go to your structure panel and uncheck ceiling over this room press OK and we remove that ceiling from our half story on the second floor Next, we're going to go through building a dormer in Home Designer software by using the one click auto dormer roof tool and through manually drawing a dormer using the wall tools. So, we're going to go ahead and minimize our photo, and we're over here in our floor plan with a 40 foot by 30 foot structure, and we have a hip roof over this floor plan. And before we move any further, let's go ahead and change this to a gable roof by selecting our wall ends and marking them as full gable walls. So, I'm going to mark the wall on the left is a full gable wall and the wall on the right as a full gable wall and then the last thing I want to do real quick um, just so we can see what's going on with the walls and the roof inside our structure that we're working with is change the rendering technique from our standard render to a glass house render so I'm going to go to our 3d camera go to our rendering techniques and change it to a glass house rendering technique now we can see through the walls and see what's going on with our floors and ceilings. And let's actually work with two 3D cameras, one on our glass house rendering technique that we have here, and then one in our standard rendering technique, just so we can see what's going on in both the outside of the house and the inside. So I'm going to go to our 3D cameras, I'm going to select our perspective full overview, and then I'm going to leave this one in the standard um, rendering technique, and then we also have this one in the glass house rendering technique. And first we're going to go through adding a dormer. And to do this I'm going to get into our floor plan and I'm going to go over to our roof tools and I'm going to make sure I have my uh, dormer tool selected. And I'm just going to click where I want a dormer to be placed. 
and Home Designer will automatically build a dormer with the walls, roofs, and even a window included inside it. If we zoom in close, we can click on this dormer and open it up just like our other objects. And here we can adjust some of the specifications for the dormer. You can have many different roof styles on top of this dormer. Um, we're not going to go through each and every single one of these. But if you have some time, I would go through each of these just to see what they look like. If you need to adjust your pitch of the dormer, um, you can do so right here. And if you want to see that pitch in degrees, just check this box. If you want to adjust your roof overhangs over the eave or over the gables, you can do so in the roof overhang um, option. And if you wanted to include a roof return over the gable end, make sure to check this box, adjust the length of that roof return and the uh, roof return type right here. And we're going to demonstrate how to build a roof return in another example later on. Going to our walls panel of the dormer specification, you can change your wall type, the height of the walls, and the width of the walls. And if you needed to change the line style, you could do so here, but we're not going to worry about this. So we're going to go ahead and press cancel. And that's going to be how you add a dormer to your design using the one-click auto dormer tool in Home Designer software. If we go over to our glass house rendering 3D view, you can see how that dormer is building into the attic of the first floor. So maybe this would mean that your design is working with a one and a half story roof style. So your dormer has some space to work with. So let's go ahead and build this. We're going to go over to our floor plan and we are going to go to build floor, build new floor. And we're going to derive the second floor from the first floor plan and press OK. And for now, all of our floor two default hiding information is how we need it. So we're going to press OK to this. And if we zoom out in our 3D view, we can see that the second floor built directly on top of that first floor. But the dormer is still building into this attic area. So let's go ahead and lower the ceiling height and uncheck ceiling over this room so that the dormer is building into our second floor in the plan. So we're going to go over to the floor plan and we're on the second floor right now. We're going to press spacebar to select object and we're just going to select in this room and we're going to go to our structure panel and we're going to change the uh, rough ceiling height to 24 inches and what this is going to do is it's going to uh, drop the ceiling right here and drop the roof as well. And then we're also going to uncheck ceiling over this room so that we don't have a ceiling to block out our dormer and press OK. And now over in our 3D preview we can see how that's coming in. Our dormer is looking a little bit more realistic to work with. And real quick if we go over to our um, floor plan we built that dormer on the first floor so maybe it would be more appropriate to build it on the second floor. So let's go ahead and um, select it on the first floor and delete it and then just go back up to the second floor go to our roof tools and make sure we have the auto um, dormer selected and just click and place one right there and you can adjust the position of this dormer too by selecting it um, and just dragging it around. I'm holding control on my keyboard to more freely drag it and there we have that dormer created and if we jump back to our standard rendering technique you can see through that dormer and into the um, room on the second floor. So now that we've gone through the one-click auto dormer tool that becomes available starting in Home Designer Suite, let's go through manually drawing in a large shed style dormer on the second floor. So to do this, let's first back out in our 3D camera view just so we can look over the whole structure. And then we are going to actually just delete the second floor altogether and start over. So we're going to go to build floor, delete current floor, and we're going to press yes, it's all right to delete this floor. And so now we only have a structure with one floor. And notice how our roof style is already that full gable roof. And now what we need to do is build the second floor again to create that um, shed style dormer. So we're going to go up to build, floor, build new floor, derive the second floor from that first floor, press OK. Under our floor two height defaults. All this information is how we need it for now. So let's go ahead and press OK. And in our 3D view we can see how that second floor came in. So next to get our manual dormer started we're going to start by drawing out some knee walls on the interior of our floor plan which will keep building upward until they encounter a roof plane. So let's go ahead and do this over in our floor plan. I'm going to go over to our wall tools, select the straight interior wall, and just click and drag a knee wall right there and then click and drag another one right here. 
you'll notice there that I accidentally did it on the first floor, so let's delete these walls and do it on the second floor. I'm just going to select them and quickly delete them and go up to the second floor and draw them right there and right there. Next I want to make sure I have them dimension the proper space from our exterior walls. So to do this I'm going to use the interior dimension tool. Now using the interior dimension tool I'm just going to click and drag through our exterior wall and through our interior wall and if we zoom in closely we can see that the dimension line is building from the framing layer of our interior wall to the framing layer of our exterior wall and I'm going to do the same thing on this wall down here and that one was about four feet away and next I'm going to adjust the position of these interior walls relative to the exterior walls so what I'm going to do is press spacebar select the wall I want to move select the dimension that we need to change it to and I'm going to change this dimension to five feet and what it's going to do is push this wall outward a little bit to account for this change in space and I'm going to press enter and I'm going to do the same thing with this wall up here, select it once, select the dimension and change it to 5 feet, press enter, and it pulled that wall in towards the exterior wall to account for this decrease in space. And then next we're going to mark both these interior walls as knee walls. So we're going to go ahead and open it up, go to our roof panel, and check it as a knee wall. And same thing with this wall on the bottom, open it up, go to roof, and check it as a knee wall and press OK. And now that we've got that completed, we're ready to draw some walls for the shed dormer. So in our floor plan, let's zoom out a little bit and go over to our standard rendering technique. And we're just going to start by clicking and dragging um, some exterior walls right along the inside of this interior wall that we have and the already existing exterior wall. So I'm going to be in our floor plan. I'm going to grab our straight exterior wall tool and just click and drag um, about where we want that dormer located. So that looks good. And then we're just going to zoom in close and make sure we have our siding facing outwards. And that wall it is. And that wall our siding is facing outwards. I can tell because it's that small um, fill with the red dashed line. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just verify that's facing outwards. Okay, very good. And then we're just going to make sure that we have our walls positioned um, where we want them in relation to the other exterior walls. So we're going to go back up to our dimension tools and just select that interior dimension again and drag it through the exterior wall on both sides. And I'm going to press space bar, select the wall, select the dimension we want to change. And I'm going to change this one to one foot. And then I'm going to change this one to one foot as well and press enter and then we're going to do the same thing over on this side select the dimension tool that we want and just drag it through select the wall to move and change the dimension change it to one foot okay so we have our exterior walls for the shed dormer one foot from the exterior walls that we can currently see outside of our plan and if you look in our standard rendering techniques it doesn't look like a whole lot is going on let's jump over to our glass house view and over here it looks like kind of a lot's going on. It's a little bit difficult to tell which wall is which. Right here we can see where that extra wall that we drew in um, is coming in. But let's keep working and do the same thing on the other side with the exterior wall tool. So I'm going to go back to our floor plan, grab our exterior wall, and just click and drag it about right there. There we go. And then I'm also going to uh, dimension it just like how we did on the other side with the interior dimension tool. So I've clicked and dragged that interior dimension and I just make sure, need to make sure that they are all one foot from each other. So I'm going to press space bar, select the wall, select the dimension and it looks like that one already came in at exactly one foot. Select the wall we want to check and if you look real closely at this wall it looks like I forgot to change the side that the siding is coming in so let's do that now. I'm going to select the wall and at the bottom toolbar we got we get this tool for reverse wall layer so what that's going to do is flip flop our wall layers so that the siding is facing out and the drywall is facing in so let's go ahead and do that got that wall correctly and that wall needs to be adjusted too and then while we're at it let's check the wall on the right hand side over here looks like that wall needs adjusted as well so now that wall is complete and we can just continue dimensioning the exterior walls. 
So let's actually go ahead and redraw our dimension line um, since it's picking up the same position on the framing layer um, that it was dimensioning tool. I'm just going to quickly select that dimension, delete it, grab the interior dimension tool, and drag a dimension between those two walls. And then I'm going to press spacebar, select the wall that we want to move, select the dimension, enter in our new dimension, and press enter on the keyboard. And that wall got pushed out. And then I'm just going to check this wall one more time with another dimension line. I'm going to delete the dimension that we currently have, and then select an interior dimension, click and drag it through. And then I'm going to select the wall, select the dimension, type in the correct dimension. Now we have the uh, uh, exterior walls the same distance that we want them to be. And then we're going to come in on this side and do the same thing. Select the interior dimension and just drag it through the walls. Press spacebar, select the wall, select the dimension that we want to change and type in our new value and press enter. And now we have all of our exterior walls that are going to be forming our shed dormers uh, positioned where we want them in relation to the exterior walls in our plan. Next, I want to delete this portion of the interior wall since we're not going to need it. I want to access this. So what I'm going to do is put a break in our walls where this interior wall meets the exterior wall so that we can modify it separately than this section of the interior wall. So to do this, I'm going to select the break wall tool up on our toolbar and just place a break on either position where the interior wall meets the exterior wall. And I'm going to do that for both the top and bottom dormer sections. And then I'm going to press spacebar on my keyboard. I'm going to select the wall section. And notice that I have it now selected independently of the other interior wall section. And I'm just going to press delete. And then we do the same thing on the top section. Next, since our end design is going to require a shed dormer, we need to mark these walls as full gable walls, just like we would do if we were building a traditional shed style roof. So let's go ahead and do that. And just repeat this for the other small exterior rear wall sections. There we go. Next, we need to open up these front uh, wall sections which will end up being part of our dormer walls and specify the pitch to be less than the pitch throughout the rest of the design. So let's go ahead and select the wall and open it up and we're going to go to our roof panel and under our pitch options we're going to change it to be 4 and press OK. And you're not going to see anything in your uh, 3D preview update right now but we will here in a little bit once we make some adjustments to the space in between our exterior walls. But let's repeat this for our top section as well. Open up the wall and under roofs change this to 4 and press OK. And now next we're going to find this space between the two exterior walls to be an attic so that the program's automatic roof generator will ignore this space. So let's go ahead and zoom in close and click once in it. Open up the small room that we have selected and define the room type to be an attic and press OK. And there you can see some major changes happened in our 3D view. The program ignored this space and started building our roofs around this space. Let's go ahead and repeat this for the other side. We're just going to come up and zoom in close and then open the room and under room type change it to an attic and press OK. And we can see that change reflected on the other side. And let's take a look at what's going on in our standard rendering technique. You can see how it's starting to form, but it's starting to come in a little bit weird. And we'll make some adjustments to this as we go by adjusting the position of some of these walls that we're creating. So next we're going to rebuild our roof. So I'm going to press Control R on my keyboard, and I'm going to set the pitch to be very, very steep. Uh, we all already had auto rebuild roof turned on, but let's go ahead and press OK for this. And you can see how it updated our roof with the most exterior walls in our plan and it made some adjustments on the interior as well. So next let's make some adjustments with our walls to hide this space that is showing. We're just going to go over to our floor plan, grab our interior wall right here and drag it back to where the slope of the ceiling and roof um, is meeting our walls. So let's go ahead and do that. And in our 3D view we can see how that updated so let's go ahead and continue doing this for the other walls in our plan.
And that's going to complete our design. You can create more complex roof styles um, to meet your design needs, but you might want to experiment as you're building to make sure that the roof pitch um, and the wall position are coming in so that the plan looks appropriate. So next, let's take some of the concepts that we've learned and apply them to a sample plan. We're going to apply them to the Sheet Cottage sample plan, which you can download from our website. So I'm going to bring our photo off to the side, and you can see that we have our Sheet Cottage plan started with the automatic um, roof styles selected. And the first thing we're going to do is change the second floor to have a height of 18 inches. So we're going to go to our floor plan, go up to the second floor, double click in the room to open it up, and under the structure we're going to change the ceiling height to be 18 inches and press OK. And that's going to update in our 3D view. And next we need the roof over these two areas to be a full gable roof as you see in the picture. So what we're going to do is select these walls and mark them to be full gable. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select the first wall and in our bottom toolbar mark it as a full gable wall. And with auto rebuild roofs turned on that updated in our 3D view. And then same thing with this wall right here. There we go. And then next we want um, to build a roof return going over this small section of roof right here. So we're going to go ahead and select the section of wall that we want the roof return. Open it up. And under our roof options we're going to check auto roof return. And we're going to set the length to be 4 feet. And we're going to keep it as a gable and a sloping uh, roof return and press OK. And in our 3D view, we now have a small roof return right there. And let's go ahead and build a roof return right here as well. So we're going to select the wall that we want the roof return on, open it up, go down to our roof options, and check auto roof return. And we're going to have this roof return type be a full roof return. So we're going to press OK. And we can see how that's starting to come in in our 3D view. So next, let's go ahead and adjust our roof uh, right here a little bit. We currently have a straight gable roof going all the way down to this wall. But in this small area we're going to have something similar to a goal wing and that we're going to have a very shallow pitch followed by a steep pitch going up to our ridge. So let's go ahead and do this. Bring our photo off to the side and select the wall that we're going to be adjusting with the roof plane over and we're going to go to roof options and we're going to change the pitch to be six we are going to have an upper pitch and we're going to be changing that to 12 and then we're going to change our in from baseline height to be six feet and press OK and with auto rebuild roofs turned on that automatically updated and next let's work to build some gable ends like we see um, in our photo here we're going to have a gable on this end and then a gable over on the other side which we can't quite see in this photo but let's go ahead and create this we're first going to select this wall and in our bottom toolbar specify it to be a full gable and that updated the wall on this side and in our 3D view let's go ahead and orbit around to this side um, we want the gable to cut off about right there so what we need to do is break the wall about right here specifically where this wall meets the other wall so what we're going to do is just select this wall and drag it all the way across and then we're going to form a break in the wall right here so let's go ahead and select our break wall tool and create our break right where we need it. There we go. And I'm just going to press spacebar, select this wall now that we know where that other wall is marked, and just drag it back. And now we have this wall separate from this wall. And with the wall selected, I'm going to change this one to be a full gable. And now we have that gable roof style over on this side of the house. And now the last thing we really need to do in the front is add the dormers um, off to the front left. So let's go ahead and do that. In our 3D view, let's reposition our camera. And then we're going to come into our floor plan view, go over to our roof tools, and select the, the dormer tool. And just click and drop one in right there. And just click and drop one in right there as well. So next, let's move on to creating the roof on the back of the house right here. We're going to have a gable roof over this small section, a roof over our porch, a gable roof on the side, and then we're going to add another dormer. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we're going to navigate our 3D view around so that we're looking at the back. We're actually going to go down to our first floor in the floor plan. And we're just going to navigate over to this side of the plan where you can see we have a lot of green dash lines indicating where our roof plans are. So let's select this back wall and just change it. 
and we can see how that instantly gets updated in our 3D view. And next, let's work with this area um, over the little porch right here, where we're going to have a high shed roof style. So let's go ahead and bring our photo off and just focus our floor plan over here. And we're just going to select this railing where our porch is, and we're going to open it up and change it to a high shed roof style. We're going to go to the roof panel and check high shed and press OK. We can see how that gets updated in our 3D view. And then we're going to do the same thing for this wall right here. Select it and open it up and go to the roof panel and check high shed and press OK. And that's going to complete our roof design over the porch. So the last thing we need to do on the back is just drop in our dormer right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go over to our dormer tool. And we are actually going to go up to our second floor to drop in our dormer and drop it into this area right here. So let's go to the dormer tools and just click and drop one in where we want it. And notice how it came in pretty high over there, um, which may be okay for um, some designs, but for this design, we're gonna bring it down a little bit. So I'm gonna select it and on the front, I'm gonna hold control and drag it forward a little bit. There we go. And then we can also widen it as needed and look how we get that preview in the floor plan as to where it's gonna be. Maybe something like that would be a little bit more appropriate for design. And then we can reposition it how we need to. And um, if we look back at our photo, um, that's going to be about how wide we want it. Um, we could, of course, add those windows if we wanted to. But that's really going to complete this design. The only thing I want to um, really mention right here is that we should turn off our auto rebuild roof and readjust the floor heights and the walls as needed. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go up to build roof, build roof, and we're going to uncheck auto rebuild roof and press OK. And then within our second floor, we're going to open up our second floor and on the structure panel, we're going to recheck default and press OK. And now that the room height is adjusted, that's going to complete this design. That's going to complete the home designer beginning roof demo. If you're using an older Home Designer program or you're interested in evaluating the features in a more powerful Home Designer program, we do have a free trial version available. We also have a 30-day satisfaction guarantee on software program purchases. If you're using an older version of the software, we do have upgrade discounts available. A great resource for increasing your knowledge of the software is the training videos and knowledge base articles available over at our website at homedesignersoftware.com. And if you would like to connect with other people using the software, make sure to check out the Home Talk user forum. If you have any questions about Home Designer software or need help choosing a program, feel free to give us a call at 208-292-3400. I want to thank you for attending this demonstration of Home Designer software, and I hope you have a great day.